quest to find answers sparked a story that's going to change the lives of millions. I didn't have the self-worth to get out of the abusive situation for myself. I have three children that are the light of my life and they are the reason, the encouragement, the purpose for me getting out of my marriage. Holly Walker finds herself in a devastating situation. He picked me up by my neck, threw me on the hood of my car in front of our youngest daughter, beat my head into the hood of my car and choked me until I could hardly breathe. Betrayed by the people who were supposed to love her, struggling just to get back on her feet, having to fight a court battle to get custody of her three young children. During this process, there were days that were extremely hard that I really second-guessed and questioned, you know, what have I done? And I decided that I was going to turn my life around. She got the idea of looking for a life coach, and she found a lady on the west coast of the United States, Kimberly Truitt. Kimberly told her she could build the life she really wanted. And she began to coach her. Holly's life began to change. I reached a point in time in my life where I decided that I was letting other people determine my happiness. And I realized that my purpose in life is to help people who are just like me. Holly and I became good friends. And today, she's a leader in the professional and personal development industry. This film, Beyond the Secret, is an expression of Holly's dream. One way of helping you and the millions of people that will be watching it. You know, the story that I've just shared with you of Holly Walker is a true story. As a matter of fact, I really played the story down. If you knew the truth about the transformation that took place in this lady, how she went from winning to nowhere and right back up again, you would never wonder whether you could win. And that's the purpose of this film. We want to recommend that you go beyond the surface. Really take a look at who you are and what you are. Do you know that there's around 11 million kilowatt hours per pound potential energy locked up in the electrons in the atoms of your body? Phenomenal power. We've got enough potential energy in us to light up a, a small town for nearly a week. What do you really want? Listen carefully as each person comes on the screen. Listen to what they have to say, because they're going to put a spotlight on something that Holly wants you to hear. But don't just listen to it. Understand it. Listen to it frequently, and then apply it. Life is a magnificent journey. It truly is, but only if we make it that way, and we have the potential to do that. Hi, I'm Holly Walker, and welcome to Beyond the Secret. What's the value of one really good idea applied to one specific area of your life? If you consider that every building in every city across our world has its ancestry in human thought, leading scientists and specific principles from the field of quantum mechanics are confirming what spiritual teachers have been telling us for centuries. This isn't just wishful thinking, it is a practical application for success in life. And the key that unlocks it is human intention. attraction is no longer a secret. It's been discussed, ripped apart, examined, and put into practice by those with the awareness of how to use it to their benefit. You may be like I was, confused, 
disappointed, or maybe you just have a lot of questions that you need answered. My website has received thousands of emails. I think I'm doing everything I'm supposed to, but it's not happening Why fast enough. Why am I enough? not making more? Why isn't the law of attraction I'm going to start working? living my dream lifestyle, not just dreaming about it. How do I do that? I made it my mission to find the answers. I set out to meet with the teachers who inspired me. The ones who really spoke to me and helped guide me through some very difficult times in my life. And literally, through the law of attraction, over the course of a year and a half, I was able to sit down with some of the world's leading visionaries and most inspirational teachers and ask questions. The wisdom that they share in this film is invaluable, and you can use it starting today to change your life. I have heard time and time again, and You've probably heard this yourself, that the law of attraction doesn't work. That's like saying the law of gravity doesn't work. The law of attraction is always working, just as the law of gravity is. Gravity keeps you sitting on a chair and you're not bouncing off a ceiling. But if you use it wrong and walk off a building, you're toast. Well, it's the same with the law of attraction. The law of attraction, though, is a secondary law. The law of vibration is the primary law, and the vibration you're in dictates what you're going to attract. When you're in the vibration of having ideas, everything that's in harmony with having that experience will start to be attracted to you. Like energy attracts like energy. If you're not in a good vibration, you're going to attract stuff you don't want. But the law of attraction is always working it's a matter of understanding it and bringing our mind and body, our whole being, into the right vibration so that we attract what we want. So if you think you're using the law of attraction, but you're not creating the results you want, it's sort of like taking a lamp to a electric plug. So if I'm carrying a lamp and I'm heading over to an electric plug and I plug that lamp in and I don't get any light, I don't get down on my knees and beg the law of electricity to please, dear law of electricity, I've thought about the law of electricity, I've done everything I know, how to be in harmony with the law of electricity, but I'm not getting any electricity, so please help me get electricity. We would never do that. We would think something's out of whack here. Either the wiring in the walls is incorrect, the cord is got a, a short in it, or the light bulb needs to get changed, and we would know that we need to do something to bring ourselves in harmony with the law of electricity. And it's not different with the law of attraction. So what we're thinking about uh, manifests many times in our daily lives, but sometimes people think that a thought is an actual thing like what I'm thinking about right now instead of where I'm thinking from where I'm thinking from so thought is more a thought is more than a thing a thought is the very essence of our life now just because we don't understand that doesn't mean that you should reject it you want to go beyond that and start to understand how your mind works the relationship of the mind to the body and then you'll start to see why you're getting what you're getting and how to change it if you don't like it. You've probably been taught or learned that thoughts become things and they do become things. They become our belief system. They become our identity, our self-worth. Thoughts become things when they're aligned with feelings, when they're aligned with action, when they're aligned with strategic relationships when they're aligned with your gift, with your calling, with whatever it is that you're bringing out in the universe. Thoughts becoming things. Let me turn that around. Everything was at one time a thought. Everything that's not green or water has been shaped by the imagination of the human mind. Everything you look at is created twice. Thinking is the highest function that we're capable of. And when we think, we take thoughts and we join those thoughts together and we create ideas. And by holding the idea in our mind and getting emotionally involved, it causes us to move into action. And it also sets up an attraction. And it's the action, the attraction, that alters the conditions, circumstance, and environment in our life. It's not enough to be talking about your dream, thinking about your dream, praying and hoping for your dream. You really do need to take action. It's been my experience that with one single action step, everything changes. You're no longer thinking about it, talking about it. You're doing something about it. 
People relate to you differently, you relate to you differently. New resources show up as you have a new perspective. It isn't that it drops in, like, you know, the whole picture just drops in, but you'll get threads of it. You'll see little, like a sprout coming up. If you honor the sprout and nurture it, it will grow, it will send down roots, it'll begin to flower and blossom and ideas come forth this way. And that's how you build a dream. You get a very clear idea, you nurture that dream. The law of gestation is important as it helps you grow that dream, but you have to take steps every single day. Take action. Create what I call a wow within one week. What's the step that you're going to take to demonstrate you're more committed to your dream than to any doubt, fear, or reality that might get in your way? It's in acting on your dream that it truly becomes real. A baby step in the direction of your dream and the direction of what you want to create, the law of the universe will work just fine. It's about us learning how it works, getting in coherence with that, and practicing that on a daily basis. So baby steps are a great way to take your steps forward. Baby steps will take you all the way up Mount Everest, by the way, if you just keep taking them. And oftentimes, the change takes place first inside before it's expressed outside. If you're taking action and you don't see the results, be aware that it's coming. And in fact, if you do build your awareness around and start looking for little examples, little results that actually are coming your way, I think you'll find that they're already there. What I've realized is when I was relying on just blind faith, whenever I would meet with this condition or circumstance uh, that I didn't know how to go through, oftentimes I stepped backwards into safety. It's really faith based on understanding how we operate that allows us to move confidently through that terror barrier and into that area of unknown outside of our comfort zone. It takes five years to become a plumber. It takes five years to become a mechanic. I'm not quite sure how long it takes to become a medical doctor, but I would imagine a few more than that. Well, we can't watch a 70-minute DVD and like that understand what makes life tick. We've got to make a decision that we're going to study something about ourselves. It takes a, a different kind of process to grow the bamboo tree. You, you plant the seed and you water and you cultivate the soil for five years. At the end of five years, the bamboo tree that does not break through the ground in those five years, in six weeks it grows over 90 feet tall. Now the question is, did it grow 90 feet tall in six weeks or in five years and I say in five years because had at any point in time you stop watering it at any point in time you stop cultivating the soil the bamboo tree would die in the ground a lot of people because they're impatient and they want things right now they allow their dreams to die in rejection they allow their dreams to die in bankruptcy they allow their dreams to die in negative conversations they allow their dreams to die in excuses they allow their dreams to die inside of them because they're not patient. They don't trust. They don't believe. Belief and trust gives you patience. When we're born, we are programmed to move along a certain track. That's called genetic conditioning. It's part of a paradigm, part of a control mechanism in our mind. And then we're programmed environmentally. Thoughts that you hold and the thoughts that you choose start to create your beliefs. They create your paradigms. They create the filters through which you see your world. Those beliefs are really what determine the actions that you're willing or not willing to take. And I don't think it takes any genius to tell you that the actions that you take in life are those things that are most responsible for the results that you're getting. I think the first thing you have to do is you've got to decide exactly what you want and then write it out in a vision form. We can take a pen and a piece of paper and decree our own destiny. Like a story, like it's already happened, like it's present tense. Now, if we don't do that, and unfortunately not that many people do, then it's predetermined. It's predestined by the paradigm that's built into us at birth. But you have the ability to change it. You build the image, you get emotionally involved with that image, you hold that image in your mind of that life that you want to live and you in it and you will begin to see those results manifest themselves. That is the way to create the life that you want. Our gifts come to serve the world, not to make us rich first, you know? And so, but I was trying to get rich <laughs> of my gifts, and I was so sad, I never got, I worked with principles too. <laughs>
I wrote it down. I did all the things that I learned to do early in the game. Uh, and, uh, and I was very depressed a lot of the times because what I wanted to see happen was not manifesting. You know, we live in this GPS society where we think we have to know every single step we've got to make, and it's really not that way. It didn't dawn on me that maybe I was on the wrong track, that maybe there was something better for me. As long as we know what the very first step is for us to take, and we may not even have a clear idea of that. Thoreau said if we'll just advance confidently just in the direction of our dream, we can live the life we've imagined. But one thing that I didn't stop doing was that I didn't stop singing, and I didn't stop writing songs, and I didn't stop uh, with my interest in music. I loved it. What we need to know is why, what, what our purpose is. Knowing how to do something really um, is at best guessing. That's something that's left to our Creator, to our relationship and understanding of how God operates with and through us. I got to a spiritual community that really inspired me and I heard the message. I heard this message that said I was more than my idea of what I thought life was. That there was something greater happening than what my disappointment had said the world was. I was disappointed with the world, I was disappointed with with everything, I was pissed off, I was mad, I was cynical, you know, because I had worked the principles, I thought. And I was like, once I really understood what that meant, I became alive. Again, that numbness inside of me began to thaw. You know, that numbness from disappointment began to really thaw. God never meant for me to be Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie, like Oprah said, Lionel Richie was taken, you know. You know, I was here to be Ricky. Well, what did what did that mean? You know what? And and then I started writing these songs of inspiration, writing songs about you know about love, about God. That's what I came to. Me. That's what I came to do. I received an email from a woman who got married at an early age, had children, and she's now divorced. She works at a job that she doesn't like to support her family. Her email had so much in common with a lot of others you feel overwhelmed by responsibility and it may be true that you do feel stuck that thinking is the problem the other stuff isn't really the problem the thinking that you're stuck is the problem so I know it's hard to think differently when you really think you're stuck that's why you want to study this and that's why you want to get some help thinking differently okay if I didn't believe I was stuck what options do I have if I didn't believe that I was going to be stuck for the rest of my life with this what could I do? The mistakes you've made in the past, you've already paid for. You don't have to pay twice. Start right now. Redefine what it is that you want. Begin to take the steps to the dream job that you do want. And you think into the solution. You begin to think from a believing that maybe there's an opportunity. I don't know the opportunity yet, but just maybe. And, and onto that parched field of believing let one little drop of water land and say, if I didn't believe it was totally impossible for me to have a life that was really fulfilling, what could I do? There are people who could say, you know, Les, I made a lot of early mistakes. And because of the mistakes I made, because of those decisions that I made, I made some short-term decisions that had some long-term consequences. And as a result of that, I can't live my dream now. Well, that's all in the past. That's all gone. You've paid for that. Don't allow what's going on right now to define you. Be open to the possibilities. One, of getting some help. Also, understand and know and expect things to get better for you. And ask yourself, what is it that you need to do differently? But it takes a mind who's willing to explore expand, extend, and you can choose to do that. You've overcome significant challenges to be where you are today. Don't give power to the mistakes of the past. That's behind you now. Look at yourself right now. Build on that. Build on what you've brought into the world and what you've overcome. And understand that you can achieve so much more if you just apply what's inside of you because it's your life and you're a co-creator and you get to choose any life you want to have but the problem really isn't the problem the problem is always my thinking about the problem 
It's never too late to change your life. It's never too late to make a dream come true. And it's never too late to create a new dream for your life. Ask yourself, where do I want to go from here? Begin to focus on the possibilities. See, whatever you focus on the longest will become the strongest. If you talk about, and I know this in my own situation, I talked about, well, I don't have a college education. Well, I was labeled educable mental retarded. Well, I'm adopted. Well, I, I never worked for a major corporation. All of the things that I focused on, that became the dominant story in my mind. When I began to flip that script and I became convinced in my spirit that what I had is enough. What you have is enough. Where you are right now, that's enough. That's all you need. If you have the faith of a mustard seed, if you hold a mustard seed in your hand, you can't see it. You don't have to have a whole lot. It is absolutely pertinent that you have a dream. If you don't have a dream and you're taking action every single day, then there's really nothing that separates you from a hamster running around in a wheel. Yeah, you're getting a lot done, but you're moving nowhere. The dream is what gives that action direction. I would really like to believe what you're telling me, Bob, but I feel stuck. I, by the time I get home and get the kids to bed, I'm beat. I, uh, I'm in hawk right up to here. I, I don't have the money to really buy some of the things or attend some of the programs you're talking about. And quite frankly, I'm tired. I really don't know how to make it work. What is something that I know I could do know I should do and know if I would do it would move me closer to my dream now I'm not I'm not asking that you're gonna have an answer that's gonna make this big quantum leap what's just the first step I have a friend who does a seminar called how to earn over two hundred thousand dollars a year with your eyes closed Mike Jones out of Philadelphia he's been blind since he was ten years old Tawana Williams, she wrote a book called Unarmed But Dangerous. She's the president of her own corporation. She was a 10-year crack addict, a single mother, and she was born without arms. Oh, what's your excuse? I say you're bigger than your excuse. Stop focusing on your reality. Start to ask yourself, how do you want your life to be? And then take action steps to prove that you're not just talking. About it. You're not inspired. And you're not inspired because you don't have a goal. You have things you want that you wish for. You're being controlled by what's going on in your outside world. Your external circumstances are just a mere reflection of your internal circumstances. I've gone into prisons. I've seen people that were stuck beyond what you could believe. And I've watched them change. There is a way, but you've got to have a reason. And it's got to be a good one. It's got to be something you want. And not all dreams need to be Mother Teresa dreams. We're lucky that there are people in the world that do want to make the world a better place. But your dream of spending more quality time with your family, your dream of being paid well for doing something you really love, your dream of being healthy and physically fit, these are really important dreams as well. Looking at the world as unlimited in possibility, looking at your life, as an unlimited set of possibilities and waking up every day in a state of gratitude. And that's not, I don't mean gratitude is going to do it for you. I don't mean gratitude is going to lead to action, but it puts you in the right frame of mind to uh, really invoke the law of attraction. So it's your emotional involvement that alters the vibration and sets up the attraction. The number one step you need to take is to fall in love with what it is you want to be, do, or have. Just repeating something isn't going to do any good. You've got to mix it with feelings of emotion. You've got to internalize it. You've got to become the actor. You've got to live the part. It's not just a want or a wish or a desire. It's an all-consuming obsession. You do it frequently. It'll become a habit. You must be emotionally involved with whatever you want or nothing's going to happen. There was a woman I know, a young mom, two kids, she was a single mom, had dropped out of high school, didn't have an education. The father of the children had been long gone and there was no child support. So she was working two jobs. She worked at a local fast food restaurant and she took in laundry and uh, alterations at night to earn enough money to support herself and her two kids. She lived in a very small one bedroom apartment uh, and it was $500 a month for the rent and it was all she could do to just squeak by. 
And then she heard about these ideas. She thought, well, if I had a dream, what would my dream be? And at that point, she thought, I would love to have like a place we could live that would have three bedrooms where we'd each have our own room. And, but how would I do that? I mean, it was, she was barely getting by on re being able to earn enough to pay the $500 a month. So you need to build a very clear image on the screen of your mind, in your consciousness, of you in the role, in the life that you want to live. Only then are you in a position to be able to plant things in the home such as vision boards or bullet points or reminders anywhere that might be on the dashboard, on the bathroom mirror, on the fridge that prompt that image onto the screen of your mind. Write out what you want to accomplish over the next six months. Not six years or 60 years, six months. And make it very clear. And what you write, if I read it, I want to be able to see the same picture that you see. That what she really wanted was a small place with a fenced backyard so her son, who was seven, had, had longed for a dog, could have his own dog. There would be a fireplace so that they would be warm in the winter. And she described the kitchen when she wanted a window over the, over the sink because she was so tired of doing dishes and looking at a blank wall. And she wanted an arched doorway to come in through and she wanted a little picket fence out front. People take the time to decide what they want and they write it out. And then they think just through, through sheer willpower they can make it happen. It isn't going to work. That's like a fly trying to fly through the glass in a window pane. It's going to die on the windowsill. One of my favorite quotes comes from General Schwarzkopf. He says that in times of war I find plans utterly useless, but planning to be priceless. Really, what would you do if you just didn't believe it was impossible? And she said, well, I'd look for it. If that's, what you, that's exactly what you do if you didn't believe it was impossible. Go look for it. And she said, well, I found exactly what I'm looking for, but I don't feel any better. I actually feel worse. I found this little house. It needs a lot of work. It's got hardwood floors need to be refinished and the covers need to be redone. But oh, there's a window over the sink, there's a little fireplace, there's no grass in the backyard, but there are three little bedrooms and the picket fence needs to... She said, but now, now I just feel worse. And they said, but if you didn't believe it was impossible. And she said, this, I don't know how this works. This can't be work. You know, I, I, I just feel worse. And they said, do this. If you didn't believe it was impossible, what idea could you get? What if time and money were not issues? What if you had the support of the people around you? She says, well, you know, they, they want $900 for this. That's like twice almost of what I've been paying. I can't do this. They said, but if you didn't believe it was impossible? And she, they said, just stay in the question. If I didn't believe it was impossible, what would I do? And here's the action part of applying the law of attraction, is that you take a step anyway. In the absence of knowing everything, you take a step anyway, it's a baby step, and you have to stay in the inquiring mind. If I didn't believe it was impossible, what could I do? What could I do? The imagination is going to cause the universal mind to start bringing you what you need and when you need it. And she got an idea, and the idea was to write the landlord a letter and tell the landlord about herself, about her children, and what she would do for that house if he would rent it to her for a year for $500 a month how she would refinish the hardwood floors, how she would redo the cabinets in the kitchen, how she would plant the grass, how she would put in some flowers, how she would paint the picket fence. And if he would supply the materials, she would provide the sweat. She wrote a beautiful letter, and then she signed the letter and she put it in the mailbox. When we're really expecting the good to come into our life that we're hoping for, we don't ask, where is it? And you must expect it. Desire without expectation is flawed. You have got to expect the good that is coming into your life. Expectation is born of belief. You have got to believe it, because if you don't believe it, then you're wishing a fantasy. Finally, two weeks later, she got a phone call. It was a landlord, and he says, I don't know why I'm doing this. I've had your letter on my desk for two weeks. I've got two full price offers, but something in your letter just won't leave me alone. So I want you to sign a contract, what you'll do each quarter of the year. And if you really will do what you say you'll do, I'll let you have the house for $500 a month. Now here she had manifested what she had really hoped for and there was no material way from her current status that she could create it. But the interesting part is not that she got the house, which she did, and not that she fixed up the house, which she did, but who she became in the process. Because she began to discover herself as someone who could create, as someone who could have a picture and not know exactly how to do it, but apply the laws of the universe and stay in the mind that says, if I didn't believe it was impossible, what would I do? And an idea would come, and if you take that step, things unfold. I really related to this next video email because I've experienced a lot of the same things. My husband thinks this stuff is all a bunch of fairy dust. 
It's hard to try when he constantly puts down everything I do. Does this stuff really work? See, everybody does not want to see you make it. There's some people that are jealous. There's some people that are envious. Why? I don't know. Some people, because if you are driven and you're working on your goals and dreams, they feel that will make them look bad. As you start to study this information, your life is going to change. You know, along the way of trying to apply these principles, you'll hit the top edge of your paradigm. You'll hit other people telling you all the reasons it can't happen, what can't be done. MIT did a study. If I tell you, you can't do that, someone has to come along and say, you can do it. You can do it 17 times to neutralize that one time. And it's very important to be absolutely fueled by your vision. For some people, the word dream is even just too out there. Let him know a dream is simply something that you want, or better yet, learn to speak the language that he understands. When a plane's taking off, it's got to go against the wind. It doesn't go with it. And you're going to run into a lot of resistance. If you're not getting a lot of resistance, you're probably not going anywhere. You're going in the wrong direction. Don't resist the resistance, though. There's a law of non-resistance. Just let it go. Because whatever you resist persists. When someone is not latching on to another person's dream, I really believe it comes from fear. In other words, their consciousness is rooted in fear. And this is basically, in a nutshell, a frightened person and they get uncomfortable with it. Now, I'm not just talking about maybe your boss or your colleagues at work that are telling you not to go and do this thing that you desire doing. I'm also talking about those that you love dearly. I'm also talking about your partner, your spouse, your husband, your wife, your mother, your father. And you know, the people that are closest to you are going to put up the most resistance. They don't really want you to get ahead because if you do, then you become a mirror to them. All of a sudden, they've got to look at you. They know they're as smart as you. They're as educated as you. They've known you your whole life, maybe. And all of a sudden, you become a mirror. And when they look in that mirror, they see themselves, except they're not where you are. And sometimes they can resent you because of that. And, uh, and it causes problems in friendships. It causes problems in families. And it's just part of moving ahead. It's part of going to the top. They don't understand what you're doing. They don't understand where you're going. And you're going to find as you study, you keep raising your level of awareness. The people you're hanging around with may not. You know, often people ask the question, will you lose people along the way? Is this a, a lonely journey? In, think about your life. You've grown, you've progressed, and probably your first grade friend is not your best friend now. And as you move through life, certain things happen and certain friendships change. You'll just keep growing. And they're not growing. And you're going to have new friends and you're going to be in a new area and you're going to be with more exciting people. Don't sell your dream out to somebody else's opinion. Look at your relationships and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? It's a new term in psychiatry called relational illness. There's some people that can make you sick. I have a friend, I'm serious. I have a friend who, when she was married for nine years, every year she had to have some kind of surgery. And once, and now it's been over eight years, she got a divorce, she never had to have another surgery. If your why is big enough, the how will show up. So you want to stay very much in touch with why you want this dream. Why it's good for you, why it's good for others, why you want to be doing this thing. If you're not yourself, then you're not free. You shouldn't be the person that your wife wants you to be, your husband wants you to be. You've got to be you. And by being you, you will be the wife that you want to be, the husband that you want to be, the employee that you want to be, or the boss that you want to be. Because if someone else raises their eyebrow and says, really, you think you're going to do that in this economy? You think you're going to do that with your education? You think you're going to do that? It can be difficult to stay fueled up in your passion. They don't understand what you're doing. They are in the comfort zone. And they think you're crazy stepping out and betting on yourself, giving up that good job, moving to that other city. Give it time. Let him see you taking action. Let him see your success. By changing ourselves, showing up more fully, living with integrity, people start to take us more seriously. Well, Les, can I change him? No. It's a full-time job changing yourself. I wouldn't try to change your husband. What I would do is I would do what you can totally 100% control, and that's your actions. Nine out of 10 people will die rather than change. That's how difficult change is. So you can't change people. Change yourself. You know, often it's the people that are the closest to us that might have the hardest time believing for us. He doesn't think you can do it, not because you don't have the talent, but just because it's not within the parameters of his belief system. 
So some of the closest people to you will not be able to see your potential. They will not be able to see your spirit. They will not be able to see what you're really made of. They see their snapshot picture of you and actually have an investment in you staying as you are because they're used to you this way. There are two types of relationships. There are nourishing relationships. Those are relationships that hold you accountable. These are relationships that challenge you. These are relationships that you can grow from mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. They stretch you. And there are toxic relationships. These are relationships that drain you. These are relationships that are very critical of you. So you want to surround yourself with people who can believe even when you can't believe. We can't always find one person who's our dream person, meaning they can deliver everything we need all the time. So it's great to have friends that you can turn to who are advocates or dream team members who no matter what you say, they're going to look in your eyes and say, I believe in you. I know you can do it. Because for any one of us, it's difficult to see the picture when you're in the frame. So you want someone else who can see the whole picture and help remind you yourself. Yeah, sometimes when you're, when you're going for your vision and your dream, people will say, oh, you're just materialistic. I mean, why don't you just be satisfied? All you care about is money and things and that type of thing. You're going to hear that. There's no question about it. At some point, you're going to hear that. Get rid of the small talk. Get into some big talk. Stretch your mind. Go where you've never been. What we're talking about is not about materialism. It's about thinking. You can apply it and get as wealthy as you want to be. There's no question about that, and a lot of people have. You can also apply it to your relationships. You can apply it to your, your health and fitness. You can, you can use it any way you wish, but it's really about thinking. As you get freer and you get more liberated and you get more expansive, it's a lot more fun. And people who are the naysayers and people who said it couldn't be done, take a look at your life and then they get interested themselves. And if they don't, you just bless that and honor their right to have a life that they choose. Life is short and it can be great. Make it that way. Don't let the resistance knock you off track. There's some people that are so happy and so at home being negative, they can walk into a dark room and begin to develop. <laughs> You know who they are. And if you're sitting with the enemy right now, just blink your eyes. I see you. <laughs>this video email is from Laura and she is like so many of us she doesn't like change I hate change I'm not happy with my life but making huge changes seems way out there and I don't want to end up being laughed at if I fail you know if we'll be open to a new idea that maybe change can lead us to the growth that we really want in our lives to a completely new who we are a redefinition of our purpose in life a, a full realization of our potential then maybe change doesn't become this thing that we have to struggle with or, or, or wrestle with. Most people live their lives completely at the whims of the circumstances around them. It's easy to get comfortable in a life that isn't really that comfortable because we're used to it. Get out of the comfort zone. You know, if you're comfortable where you are, you're in a bad spot. You know, I was very corporately conditioned. I was programmed to to go into work every day, to, to earn the salary check. And the thought of not having that salary check, the thought of not having that company car, the thought of moving out and doing my own thing scared me witless. It kept me in that place for four years beyond when I should have gone. Don't settle for comfort. Life is too short. It can be a phenomenal trip. Don't give yourself permission to continue to be where you are. Give yourself permission to grow. Give yourself permission to reinvent yourself. Give yourself permission to take your life to the next level. When people say to me, I'm scared, I know where they are. Because you see, we're controlled by our conditioning. We're controlled by our paradigms. And they will keep us gripped because they don't like change. Status quo is their business. Being comfortable is not a good place to be. And unfortunately, most of us were encouraged to get there. Just get enough money to pay your bills and everything's going to be great. People who live lives of greatness are willing to be uncomfortable in the interest of growth. They're willing to stretch a bit. They're willing to be in some uncharted territory. It's when you're uncomfortable that you're growing. It's when you're a little scared. You're excited and scared at the same time. And that feeling at the conscious level is worry. At the subconscious level is fear and in your body is anxiety. Now understand what this message is from your mind. Your body is just an instrument of your mind. This is your mind's way of telling you 
that you are about to grow. It's when you're going after something, you have no idea how you're going to get there, but you've got to know you're going to get there. It is not your mind's way of telling you that you cannot achieve what it is that you're about to do. You have infinite potential. Step out and bet on yourself and keep going until you reach a point of discomfort. Then you know you're growing. A hundred thousand mile journey begins with the first step. You take that one step, you'll find that the next step will become clear to you. And then the next step. And before you know it, things will have changed like that. Now, if that's not something that you like or want to do, then you get to have the life you want and you can stay stuck as long as you want. It's your life. But ultimately, if you notice, you might get really tired of feeling hemmed in, closed down, shut in to a life that is very repetitive. Some people live 90 years, some people live one year 90 times. The beautiful thing about being who we are is we have the ability to make choices. J. Martin Coey in a little book called Your Greatest Power said that is your greatest power. It's the power to choose. Every day I wake up, I make up my mind, today's gonna be a great day. And you know something? It is. If you learned to walk, you had some disappointment. You saw a toy across the room. You wanted to go get it. You stood up and you fell down. And you stood up and you fell down. And you stood up and you fell down. And you never once, when you fell down, went, that's it. I'm just not meant to be a walker. No baby does that. But as adults, we get older and we start thinking we're smarter than that. So we fall down in love and go, that's it, I guess I'm not meant to have love. I don't want to be disappointed and hurt again. We fall down in money. And we say, oh, that's, I, guess, I guess it's not for me to have abundance. It's not about that. It's about a willingness to have some stretch goals. And you are going to fall down and you are going to have some disappointment. But it's okay if along the way, what you're recognizing is you're part of something that is much bigger that a little bit of disappointment or having your dream come true exactly when you thought it should, you're living a life. If you look at the most successful people that have ever lived, the ones alive today or the ones in the past, failure was a part of their journey. And you're living in what Hildegard de Bingen in the 13th century called the best life there is. And she said each one of us must learn to live on the green growing edges of our own becoming. You're here to do what you love to do. And it's more than just following your bliss. It's really, really doing the thing that you love to do and learning how to do that well, not to think that, well, just because I can sing, you know, I love to sing, well, let me go get a record deal. You know, let me go get a contract. Let me use the laws to manifest this. And it's like, well, no, no, let's, let's learn to sing. And that's where aliveness is. So you get to choose how much life you're willing to live. We're here to serve our gifts to the world. That's why we got them. That's why we got the things that we love to do. I mean, it's an indication of what it is you came to do. In your day-to-day -day activities, what really has meaning for you? And that'll be 75% of your purpose, of what you're passionate about. The other 25% can be calibrated by those around you that know you well. Ask them what it is that you're good at. Ask them what it is that they love about you, what, what you do at your best. Correlating both of those will be your purpose. I've always loved music. And so my vocation revolves around music. It always has. I mean, I've always loved doing that. And I've met so many people who just really didn't know. They don't know what they came to do. I'm thinking like, well, you just came to express your creativity. Now, what is it that you feel good about being creative? I mean, how do you like to express yourself? What is the way you like to do that? And somewhere along your line of interest lies the thing that you came to do. And, um, and then the people who would be served by what it is that you love to do. You watch most people, it looks like life was a practice run. They sort of tiptoeing through life, hoping they make it safely to death. But imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the gifts given to you by life and that you, for whatever reason, you never pursued those dreams. You never used those gifts. You never acted on those ideas. You never used those abilities. And there they are standing around your bed looking at you with large angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. When a person is numb, they're so cut off from, what, from their own happiness, from their interior happiness. It's very difficult to know 
who they who you are and when you're in that place and that's when you need a spiritual healing that's when you need something to shift inside that's when that's when you need to be still so that you can discover what it is that wants to speak to you what that wants to speak through you the wealthiest place on the planet is a cemetery there you find potential never manifested there you'll find books never written. There you'll find music never played. There you'll find ideas and businesses never given birth. It's your life and you get to choose. But I'll tell you this, there is way more joy and way more fun and way more aliveness if you're willing even to explore a little bit. And you don't have to take giant steps of change. You can take baby steps of change. Just be willing to explore a little bit. And what will happen is your change muscles will start getting stronger and you'll start to have a little more appreciation for the value of little changes because they produce great results over time. You're stronger than you can ever begin to imagine. You and everyone watching this can do it. You've got something special. You've got greatness in you. How about living your dream lifestyle instead of just dreaming about it? Let's throw this to America's dream coach, Marsha Weeder. The difference between a dream and a fantasy like winning the lottery is that in a dream you can design a strategy for getting there. A fantasy is wishing for something. So if you're not emotionally involved with an image or, or a, an outcome that you want, a result that you want in your life, then, you, then you're idly wishing, you've got a fantasy. A dream is something that you have that you are very emotionally involved with. Now this is absolutely essential. In winning the lottery, short of buying a lot of tickets and doing a lot of hoping, there's nothing that you can do to make it happen. Get pictures of where you want to go, put it on a vision board and inundate your consciousness with these images because the brain works in images. And so you want to think about this all the time. Get those images in front of you all the time and then start taking steps toward the manifestation of your vision. This is one of those great opportunities to get creative. This is one of those great opportunities to say, this is a dream that I have. I have absolutely no idea how I'm gonna do it. All the conditions and circumstances around me right now stink. Uh, I don't know how to do it. In my experience interviewing world-class performers in all kinds of different fields, what i found is they decide exactly what they want. They put a vision together and then they share that vision of where they wanna go with as many people as possible who can help them. It's funny that the shortcut step is to share your dreams, but the truth of it is, most of us don't want to. Let's face it, if I tell you my dream, you might, you might laugh at me, or you might think my idea is crazy. Worst case, you might steal my idea. But the number one reason why I don't want to tell you my dream is because if I tell it to you, you might expect me to do something about it. If you desire an outcome, it has a, a massive impact on the likelihood of it happening. Where are you going to get the time? and where are you going to get the money? Get a support team to help you. A support team is just really just a group of people that when you get down, when you get tired, when you get frustrated, they say, you can do it. I believe in you, keep moving forward, you're on the right track. The number one way to experience greater ease and shortcuts on any dream is to share your dream with other people. You find people who have done what you want to do and then you enlist them on your mentor team. You call them up, you find them, you, you use your contacts to get to them, you do whatever it takes to get to them and then you ask for their help. And the, the, the crazy thing that I've found over the years is, is I've done this for many times is no one's asking. No one's asking these people and more often than not, at least in my experience, they're willing to help. I think we ought to have a close group of associates that we can brainstorm with, we can mastermind with, and of like mind. And we know that they would do anything for us, and we'll do anything for them. The only reason that you're listening right now, feel me in your heart, because there's something in you that's demanding that you come up higher, and you've got to answer the call. But what if I fail? But what if everyone's right? But what if it really is a bad idea? But what if I don't have what it takes? I think you're going to lose belief. I think every great performer along the road to manifesting their vision loses belief. You, you may hear that they don't, but I've worked with a lot of them and I think all of us have. We've all lost our belief at some time. And then there's a support system right there to pick you up. I remember when I was building my my, uh, my speaking business and, and I just wasn't going anywhere with it. And I would talk to 
my parents, I would talk to my wife Dawn, and, she, and they would say, without any question, when I was down, they would be there to say, you can do it. I know you're so close. You're going to break through. You're going to break through. And it would give me just enough courage, just enough mental toughness, if you will, to, to hang in there one more day and one more week until it finally broke. We all need help. We all need support along the way. Get up and get going. I've lost everything two or three times. Never slowed me down. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. So what? You can come back again. Willie Jolly, motivational speaker and author said, a setback is a setup for a comeback. You have comeback power. I found, and I think you're gonna find the same thing, is that dreams are contagious. The secret here is to separate out what is your dream and what are your doubts and fears about it. The bottom line is, which one are you more committed to? Your dream or your doubt? Your dream or your fear or your reality? Prove that you're more committed to your dream by taking action. To become that person that you know in your heart of hearts that you have it within you. In the current economy, businesses are facing tough times. I've talked to business owners and individuals with small companies, and basically, they all have the same question. My business is hurting. We're making cuts, laying people off. I feel like I've done about everything I can do. I know that, you know, sometimes in, in a tough economy, you make decisions that are end up being more courageous than others, and maybe I should be more aggressive. I really am just looking for some direction. closure crisis is centered in four states, but taxpayers across the country will feel the pain of failing. in America continues to spiral downward. The Dow Jones dropped another 300 points. Foreclosures reached an all-time high. market plunge today. The Dow is tumbling once Just again. Just this week, information was released that 2.3 million American homeowners faced the loss of their homes last year. We are being inundated today with economic information, the likes of which probably most people alive have never heard before. You have been given the God-given ability to create your own economy. And that's what you want to start to do. Quit listening to all these terrible news broadcasts. Does that mean that the economy is not in bad shape? It doesn't mean that at all. But if you study history, it's when things are at their worst that they're actually at their best. That is one of the laws of the universe. It's called the law of polarity. You've got to train yourself to look for the good in it. Go back and study during the Great Depression of the 30s. Do you know there were people earning millions of dollars? Businesses being built. Not everybody went out of business. Some people went into business. This is a phenomenal time. There's great problems. There's great solutions in every one. Study it. Bring your mind to bear on the good side of what you see. I think what you can do right now is be open-minded to a new idea. Uh, understanding that the way that you've always done business may not be the way that you're always going to continue to do business. Uh, one of the great books, uh, The True Believer, written by Eric Hoffer, he said that uh, in times of change, it's the learners who inherit the earth. It's easy to have faith when you have a job, well, your business is successful, you can make payroll, you, your marriage is working out, your children are acting like they have good sense, no one has looked at you and diagnosed you with a terminal illness. It's easy to have faith then. But the true test of faith is when life taps you on the shoulder. You've got to look to your beliefs about money. Like, what do you believe about money? Do you believe that money is a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it something that, uh, that, that you shouldn't want? It's, is, it, is it wrong to want money? I would study your beliefs because your beliefs will, will dictate your behaviors. You don't necessarily get what it is that you want in life. You get what you believe you're capable of. You get what you believe you're worth. And if your behaviors aren't in line with making more money, you won't make more money. You can wish for it all day long. It's not going to happen. But if you can alter your beliefs and expand your beliefs around money, you can automatically, just by default, change your behaviors around money, which will ultimately lead to making more money. A person doesn't earn $50,000 a year because they want $50,000 a year. They earn $50,000 a year because they're not aware of how to earn $50,000 a month. Stop and think of the things that you're aware of today that you weren't just a couple of years ago. Awareness is the most phenomenal thing. If you were aware 
of how to utilize the potential that you've got, your whole life would change just like turning on a light. Awareness, you develop it through reading, you develop it through listening, you develop it through studying people who have done what you want to do. Study people that have developed wealth and watch the way they live. I don't mean the cars they drive or the houses they, they own. That's all fine, but that's all icing on the cake. Everything you own at the time of your death is going to belong to somebody else. But what you are is yours forever. No one is any better than you and no one's any worse. We are truly equal. And what we want to do is really understand that. Do you know that everything, ourself and everything that we see, is energy and it's in a source of vibration, pure and adulterated spirit. There's an infinite amount of money. I don't mean there's an infinite amount of paper and gold. I don't mean that. I mean making money is really unlimited because money really flows directly from ideas. When you begin to start thinking, get grounded within yourself and be still and start thinking and not allow yourself to make decisions from your fears, Zig Ziglar calls fear, false evidence appearing real. You want to be thoughtful and start thinking and strategizing and developing a plan of action or where you're going to go now, where you're going to move your life, what's next for you. Because there is something available for you. It's now time for you to start a new chapter in your life. There's total abundance out there. Most people don't know that, but that doesn't mean you can't believe it. That's what wealthy people believe. They believe there's no end, there's no limit to the wealth they can build. I remember a point in my life, things were working out real good and I said, this is too good to be true. I had a talk show. They paid me millions of dollars to do the show. And when I came into New York and, and was in the studio in Manhattan Studios, I looked around and I said to my mentor, this is too good to be true. And he said, Les, there are no overachievers. I said, Mike, this is too good to be true. Something is bound to happen. And it did. Thou shalt decree a thing and shall be established unto you. Death and life is in the tongue. Don't be afraid of taking a risk. If you fail, you can get up and go at it again. Failing is a part of winning. One of my favorite studies is on uh, the spirit of opulence written by Thomas Troward. He said that when we're drawing from the infinite, we never be afraid of taking more than our share. I just love that. He said that's not where the danger lies. The danger lies is in taking less and being willing to settle for that. I am asked over and over again, is this a good time to take a risk? Step out and follow your purpose. Do you know the worst thing that can happen to you is not to take a risk. That's the greatest risk. See, I live with the idea that if you're not on the edge, you're taking up too much room. We've got to step out of the life we're in if we ever want to get to the one we're going for. You know, a lot of people talking about waiting for this ship to come in. And Abraham Lincoln talked about the fact that the people who win in life are willing to swim out to the ship. <laughs> you weren't born believing that money is the root of all evil or that uh, you should go to college or you shouldn't go to college or you should get married or not get married. Those are all programs from people of influence in our childhood. When we were little kids, people said this is right and this is wrong. And we believed it because we didn't have any frame of reference as children to argue with them. Well, now we do. Now we know what we're going to need to get where we want to go. The quality of thinking that has defined who you are and the life conditions and circumstances you have now is not the same quality of thinking that's going to produce what it is that you want and move you beyond your comfort zone. Now you believe it. Now what? Now what you're going to do is you're going to start taking action to move forward with building your wealth because you're not going to be holding yourself back. You're not going to be sabotaging yourself with this belief that, there, that there's only so much and who are you to want more? Who are you to dream bigger? Because you know there's enough to go around for anyone that can believe and then follow up their belief with action. If you have an idea of a business that you want to start and immediately you sit down with pen and paper and want to figure out how you're going to afford it, you might right out of the gate compromise the dream down, making it smaller because you know that you can afford this much money. But as you start to pump up the muscle of being more creative, more visionary, dreaming bigger dreams, you'll also see that it's more powerful to really go for what you want and then figure out how to make it happen. First understand what your dream looks like and then when you know what your dream is, 
then decide if you have enough money or not because how possibly could you know how much money you need until you start taking action towards it. In our conscious mind we have this thought that we want to be, do or have more. We want this big income, we want uh, better relationships, but that thought then has to be in harmony with the belief of who we are and oftentimes it's not and here I think is where I know for me in my life many times and I think a lot of people get stuck because this is where we surrender. I think there's two major kind of beliefs. There's, there's true belief where you've actually experienced something and you know it's true. You believe it because you actually lived it. it that's true belief, 100% belief. And then there's the belief of, of a lot of super achievers, which is what we call manufactured belief. In other words, as emotional creatures, they've literally talked themselves into believing something they've never done before that they don't even know is possible, but they talk themselves into it. We call that manufactured beliefs. And a lot of people, before they ever accomplish their visions, have 100% belief in their ability to do so because they've talked themselves into it. What else in you that you haven't used that now the universe is demanding that you bring it out here? Really get very clear on the vision of what it is that you want to do. Internalize that vision, become emotionally involved with it, and then when you become intuitively aware of an action step, an idea, one of those out of the blue moments that you can do that would move you closer, that's when you act, regardless of the condition or circumstance. Those are the three steps. Build the image, internalize the image, and then take action. When you are actively engaged in making things happen, you don't have to have to be depressed. I don't think most people will do what we're talking about. That, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You should do it. And that's one of the reasons to do it is because most people won't. It gives you an unbelievable opportunity to move ahead. A negative person can look at opportunities and all they will see will be the obstacles. But a positive person, a person who has an optimistic view of life, they can look at the obstacles and all they will see will be the opportunities. And everyone could do it, but chances are they won't because of all that lack and limitation programming years and if someone is 30 years old chances are they have 30 years of lack and limitation programming that's a lot to overcome so most people probably won't do it but you can do it all you have to do is take the steps now take the steps starting today forget the past it's over most people don't realize the 4040 plan is gone. This is the era of the three C's, accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition. The 40 hour a week doing the same thing for 40 years, that day is gone. That was a domestic economy. This is a global economy. You will have, if you're just getting into the job market, at least five careers before you're 65. This is a time you want to be creative. This is the age of what Ralph Waldo Emerson calls the age of self-reliance. You want to be creative. What are the various things that you can do that you're not doing right now? Today, as Robert Shield would say, you either expand or you are expendable. Be creative. Start thinking. What is it I can use my talents and abilities for? I think if you'll start to focus on how you can rather than why you can't, you're going to find that not only is your business going to grow, but the people in your business are going to grow. Your success or failure in life is directly related to the quality and the quantity of the service that you provide. And as you're looking at yourself, whatever area you decide to get into, just make up your mind. You're going to be creative and relentless and disciplined and innovative and that you're going to provide more service than you get paid for. You and hundreds of thousands of other people find themselves in a very similar position. One thing we do know is that change is inevitable. The way that we've always done things isn't always going to work in the future. But what are your assets? What are your gifts? What are your talents? What are the things that you can do right now where you are with what you have? Chances are the conditions and circumstances for you right now are not conducive to you making this big change in your life. You have to find the yes people in your life. You have to find the yes conditions. You have to find the yes circumstances. You want to be connected with like-minded and like-hearted people. People who you trust and believe in. People who are moving in the direction of their dreams. 
people that can inspire you and that you can inspire them. People who can help you to open some doors that you don't see right now. People that can help you go to the next level. You want to be connected with people that are on the way rather than in the way. When you've got enough money, you can do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, for as long as you want, and you don't really ever have to uh, be responsible to anyone else. You're never beholden to anyone else unless you want to be, unless you choose to be. It gives you the ultimate freedom, which is the freedom of choice. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Keep moving. <laughs> In Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, he brought out a very, very important point. He said that an educated person is not necessarily a person with an abundance of general or specialized knowledge. He said an educated person is a person who has so developed the faculties of their mind that they can acquire anything they want or its equivalent without violating the rights of others. Our education system is nothing more than a, a system that memorizes data. I, I don't know many people in the world that find Pythagoras particularly useful in their day-to-day -day activities. So we come out of an education system without ever asking ourselves quality questions. The kind of questions that people need to live a fulfilled life. You have a conscious mind and you have a subconscious mind. Your conscious mind can originate ideas, it can accept ideas, and it can reject ideas. Most of us have been programmed and conditioned our entire lives to gather information in this part of our mind using our physical senses. And it's through gathering this information that we then begin to form ideas. Now your subconscious mind, unlike the conscious mind, has no ability to reject. Whatever you give to it, it'll accept it. It does not know big from small. It doesn't know good from bad. Everything just is. It accepts whatever you give to it as real. This vibration begins to move our bodies into a certain form of action. We begin to produce actions, we begin to feel a certain way, act a certain way, behave a certain way. We have intuition, we have perception, the will, the imagination, reason, and memory. And these are all perfect. They have to be exercised like the body. You exercise the mind, it too will become strong. Intuition gives you the ability to pick up vibration. Unfortunately, most people will use it wrongly. In their conscious mind, they will choose what it is that they want. They will become emotionally involved. They'll impress this idea upon their subconscious mind. And while they're just driving down the road, an idea just boop, pops right into their mind, out of the blue. And this idea will be in harmony with what it is that they've asked for. It, it'll be in harmony with the goal that they've set. And the first thing they do is they say, are you sure? You know, is this the right idea or is this the wrong idea? Should I do this or should I do that? Is this good or bad? What you don't like, reject it. And what you do like, accept it. You've been given the ability to think. It's the highest function that you're capable of. When we get this intuitive idea, when this sixth sense, when this hunch comes in, you don't want to ask, is this right or wrong, or good or bad, should I or shouldn't I? Because that's a limiting question, and the answer is yes to both of those. There's reasons probably why you should, and there's reasons why you probably shouldn't. The better question to ask is this. If I acted on this idea, would it then move me in the direction of the model of perfection that I'm claiming I want in my life? And if it will, you've got to move. So stop giving yourself those excuses that say, well, you know, I'm not good enough for this, and I'm not good enough for that, because that again is your conditioning. That's rubbish. You can achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve in the same way that Bill Gates has done it, in the same way that Richard Branson has done it, or in the same way that anybody that you get inspired by has done it. Understand that you have exactly the same faculties, the ability to choose and shape your environment accordingly. Tune into that power and you will create an extraordinary life. Well, I believe that we are all radiant lights of God. You are a radiant light of God. I'm a radiant light of God. And if you don't want to use the word God, we are radiant light. We are energy, we're pure energy. So we're always radiating something. We're radiating something and I would choose to be one who radiated love. And, um, and I feel like when I'm radiating that, 
The universe corresponds to its own nature. So I'm radiating this beautiful essence that is love and I find love. You define your purpose by first taking a look at your life, the things that you're doing for work and the things that you're doing for fun and say, what do I really get excited about? What really gives me that psychic income, that, that feeling that I'm doing better? That kind of feeling is telling you it's feedback from the spiritual core of you, who you are inside. That's telling you your purpose. And you will find that there is magic in this. As the image and the feeling tone get in coherence, it's like laser and things really begin to shift fast. I know today's going to be a great day. There are no problems, there's only lessons. Everything that happens is to teach us something, to move us ahead to the next phase of our eternal journey. This isn't a fantasy world we're talking about. This is the real world. This is something you can do. People with less talent, less intelligence, less education have done this. Find out what you love and then dedicate your life to it. If you at all believe in the law of attraction, you know that you've attracted this film into your life at this very moment in your life. You're not here by accident. I'm not sitting here talking to you by accident. I encourage you now to live your life, to live into your full potential, to recognize the greatness within you, and to begin to express it. The world is waiting for you. You have something special. You've got greatness within you. Answer the call. It's time. Watch footage not seen in Beyond the Secret and exclusive interviews with the stars. Sign up for free weekly 60-second videos from Holly and the team sent straight to your inbox. And we want to hear your story for consideration in Holly's new TV series. Click it on LifeSuccessTV.com.